Okay, folks, we're up pre-show for YouTube. We're getting ready for the real estate show, which it will start in a few minutes. It's actually technically the Mailrite Real Estate Show by Con uh, produced by Con. I don't know. I got to throw Conrad Pacific in there. I, I got to look at my other. Well, just notes. just call it um, timelines and mail. Timelines, yeah. The, the timelines and mail right together, whatever. Yeah, you yeah we'll do it. I'll just look at my last words. Hey, anyway, um, we're recording pre-show. I'll let you guys go over. We're going to talk about Jonathan sent yeah. out three three sites. So, um, Craig, great sound right now. So, Craig, have you utilized this first link? This H this VHT company. Uh, the one you put in the in the linker. Now I'm going to put it in. I've got, right I've got three, VHT, BombBomb, bomb, and then there's are, Breakthrough Real Estate. This, com this company here. Go in that order. Do you see the link? Yeah. Uh, that is VHT. Jonathan, let's put them in the order, then BombBomb. Bomb. Yep. Yeah. Do you want to make, are you, you going to look do at it? Me? I've got all of those open right now on my screen. Ah, oh, crap. I don't want to do that. So I'll post the other two. I, I've got them ready to post right now. Well, you post them then, Bill. Yeah, because I got them up, and then... The uh, breakthrough. I, I wish a little bit more time. I need this. Is really the 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 bread and butter. You know, I was thinking today. I was thinking to myself, why do so many real estate agents fail? Because they don't work. Um, <laughs> That's why. That well, is exactly uh, why. They're they're entrepreneurs. They're definitely entrepreneurs. Well, that's a stretch. They're, they, they are dreamers. They see the people that are successful. They don't see the grind behind the, yeah. the, the, the success. And they say, oh, my God, look, there's a Mercedes. There's a well-dressed human being. There's, that's so easy. All they do is drink martinis and put a sign in the front yard and make hundreds of thousands of dollars. What they don't get, is you, you got to flip and hustle your buns off. Uh, can I in this business. can I give a slightly different perspective? I'm not saying you're wrong, Craig, because I, I think – I think there's many factors and many reasons. I think what you've said is a major reason. But I also feel it's, it's very similar reasons, and I don't know if Bill's going to agree with this. It's very similar reasons to our business. It's been undercapitalized and underestimating the, the gap between starting to make some money and basically making no money, but also having to spend money to invest in the business as well. And um, most businesses have a bit of a gap. I, I was talking to one of my mentors, and he's a much younger guy, um, but he, he was involved in the VC industry and was successful at it. But he started a business um, in Reno, and in nine months, it was profitable. It was it was not only profitable; it was boot, it was financing the growth of the business as well. Um, but that is unusual. Um, I feel that's a, so. I feel a lot of agents, unless you got um, somebody, your spouse, or you saved up some money, I always think they're always looking for quick results and they get discouraged really quick because the money just doesn't, isn't coming See, in. Correct. I disagree with you, Jonathan. I've All been right. around it for 25, 30 years and I've seen agents come in with very little money, a used car salesman, 24 years old, and he got out and hustled. And this is, this is before the internet. I'm mean, barely internet. Right. And he went out with a, with, with those little door knocker hangers and just like you did, Craig, he went out, uh, Greg, excuse me. He went out every day. And, and hung doorknobs and knocked until he got listings and he got listings and he started really getting a lot of listings. Once you get three or four listings, you really start building on themselves. Another, it just, ha you know, once you get listings, three or four listings, mm -hmm. and if you can carry eight, eight listings, seven, Karen was carrying seven to eight listings in Modesto, um, you know, between 2005 and 2000, between 2000 and 2006 consistently. Uh -huh. Our company was carrying, you know, maybe 18 to 25 listings, a small office, team office. And that's really keeps you hopping with three teams. That many listings. Great, right, Craig? Oh, yeah, man. I mean, we're cranking up right now. The board you see behind me, it's pretty, pretty barren at this moment because we don't have a lot of our, our, mm -hmm. our listings that were coming up. I mean, but it's, uh, I mean, if you, in, a single agent, if you're a single agent is carrying three to five listings, they're going to be working their buns off. Right. Yeah. And if they can consistently market follow-up using mail right system, something along those lines that's affordable, that's effective, that touches on multiple different levels. By the yeah. way, Jonathan, I have some ideas for you. Um, and um, 
you know, utilizing technology in a smart way. So use tre Trello or something along those lines to schedule your blast, uh, schedule something out, or use MailRite to schedule your social media out. Use Videolicious. I put the link in the um, in the in the, uh, in the in the chats here to create really con uh, very visually effective and um, attractive videos about local things in your area. Yeah, you're gonna rock and roll. Not to mention the buyers you're gonna pick up from the open houses and the other sellers that come around. It's it's a it's a cyclical. yeah, it's a, it's a cycle. And now yeah. what happened in 2007, and we saw you know it started really started slowing down. We hit the cap, and you had to get out to people. They could still make money in 2007, but they had to keep their prices below the market to sell it because it was moving down. So you had to get below. If you're even at the market, it's gonna go up above it, and you're not gonna sell it. So. Mm -hmm. You couldn't get the people, and some people understood that. They knew that this was going down right now, and they needed their their prices low because they'd made so much. And if you wanted to sell, that was the time. Two thousand six, two thousand seven, I made really good money on a house that I built and sold in two thousand six. Mm -hmm. Almost at the top, not at the top, but we, it was going down by that time too. But we still made great money. That's totally true. My ex-wife made; she sold one of her properties, her main property. She made two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Hey, for the day, I'm going to do it at 10 o'clock. we get got a break because I'm doing another uh, special show with Nick Hernandez. And what I'd like to do, and I think we can, we can stay on this and I can check it, but what I'd like to do is let's, I'd like to keep the podcast at, at uh, 7, 7, and 5. Yeah. 23 minutes. And so, so we, uh, we're off subject, which we normally do, but let's get back. So do, do, you, do you know this company, um, um, Greg? The um, VTX or whatever? The VHT Com. No. I don't. I uh, I've never never really heard of them. Well, he um, the uh, marketing director of the company published on Ingman an article, and I did try and get him on the show, but he was unavailable. Um, but it seemed pretty cool because obviously um, they're raging with local. Um, it's not revolutionary, but I just wanted to discuss the importance of property photography, Greg, and you know depending on the type of property you're dealing with, you know, how important it is it to get really quality photography. And if it's a certain pro type of house, certain price level, getting a really good video of, of the property, you know, I want to ask you your experience about Absolutely. that. Right. Absolutely. We, you know, we, we, well, let's, not, let's, let's not discuss it now. Let's discuss it, discuss it during. Oh, I didn't know. Uh, we're still pre-show. All right. Yeah. yeah we're we're not recording yet. He's going um, to get, so how does that sound, Bill? Yeah, it sounds fine. So let, it'll be fine. I want to go, um, I want to really be a little tighter on the episodes of break. It'll be short, very short breaks. We're just going to break, say hi, any questions and go back right into it. Um, the last show was 2004-32, the real estate you, agent show with special guest, Jonathan Green. Yeah. Can you run the breaks? Can you just, you know, just um, put your hand up? Just put your hand up and I'll try and... One, one of us will say it, whoever's coming on. It's natural. We both have it down now. It's fine. Right, you know, I'll just right. say, hey, it's time to go to break. Right. But put your hand put your hand up. Or this. Yeah, all right. The, the biggest thing is I need about you know 15 seconds of quiet yeah. to find it fast. And the sound is really good right now. Blab just did an upgrade yeah. yesterday. Did you hear that, Craig? When he puts the clock up, he yeah, knows that. Um, we're going to try and go for a break pretty quick. So okay. if you're in trying to shorten it. And we're going for the break, Greg. Right? Right. Puts the clock up. Greg shuts up. I got it. And the other thing too, Greg. I don't know if you saw it, but on Sunday I laid out links to all the shows, and they're working great. So today is uh, Thursday. I don't know why Thursday is yeah, Thursday, and I'm going to move it around to just a post in the future, and then put a link to the post. Mm -hmm. so I have not seen those, but I was also sleeping all Sunday, so I'll show you something. <laughs> Could have been problem. Paste if you go there, and then when we close too, I'm going to stay. What's up tomorrow? just to run the next show and have people schedule for tomorrow. So I did that yesterday uh, and put up links and had people you know, schedule. So let's, let's get going. Camera. One, one second here. I just got to check something. It's 211. 211 dash 33. I'm just going to keep it real simple on the intro. Here we go. Quiet for a second. Um, real fast, there's two parts to the intro. I got to have a little gap between them. There's no sound. Welcome to Timelines, episode 2000. 
Welcome to the lot. Welcome to Timelines, episode 211, and today is the Real Estate Show, episode 33. We have Greg McDaniels on from the Bay Area. Um, can I interrupt, Bill? It's not 33, it's 37. Yeah, it was 30, 32 last week. Yeah, we made a mistake. If you go to the web, I'm sorry to interrupt, Bill, but it is. No problem. It's 37. Okay, here we go. I would, can I check that quickly, actually? I think oh, it could be gonna pause. Okay, on today's show, we're going to go into some detail, mostly about video and special production. We've got different, three different perspectives. Myself with 25 years coming really post-internet. Um, We've got Greg coming in, in with his dad, you know, and Star Power and the teams over the years really coming through the system and seeing all the changes, and they definitely have changed. And we have Jonathan with a technical side perspective. With that, open it up, Jonathan, Gr Greg. Oh, thanks, Greg, for coming back on. So... I thought we'd talk about the importance, um, get to a kind of nitty gritty subject, the importance of photography and video uh, in promoting and selling a property, Greg. Um, what, what's your, what's your, I just want your general thoughts about it, and then we look at some of the links that I sent to you. How does that sound? Sure. Sounds good. Yeah. So, so what's your general views about the importance of photography and video and the differences between, let's say, the kind of average family home and when you go into the more luxurious side of the market. I think the good photos and videos are critical no matter what type of property, what price point of the property that you're doing. I think it shows a professionalism level of the agent. You know, taking your handy dandy iPhone here uh, and shooting the photos is not gonna, it's not, it's not professional level. Going in there with a with a true photographer that really knows what they're doing, that can zip through the thing, give you high quality, high res photos. You can put out on onto uh, the MLS, onto the web, everywhere else, onto your blog, onto your website. Um, that uh, really showcases the beauty of the home, no matter what condition it's in. But people really get to see it. You know, they come through and they'll you know ho hopefully try to pick up some stuff or talk talk to people how to stage a room quickly. You know, get the dirty underwear off the bed, put the plates in the in the dishwasher. You know, stuff like that. That, that makes the difference behind uh, you know someone really wanting to buy that house or kind of wanting to buy that house on the first on the first impression. It's like dating. It's like it's real estate dating. You know, if the buyer, aka you know the pursuer, does not like or think it, it, the home is attractive, therefore they may go on to another one. So, in my opinion, it's it's, it's without a doubt it's it's an, it's an essential. What about um, video of the outside and the inside? Good question, Jonathan. Uh, what we do is I do take that. Now, this is where the difference is. I take a video and it's a raw video. I turn it around. I use my arm because I'm six foot five. I have, I have a built in <laughs> selfie stick. I don't need to go get one. Um, and I do a video of front of the house talking about how great it is. And then I take it onto Facebook on my personal page, tag it, tag my team, tag all my team members, tag my lender, tag the homeowners, tag their kids, tag everybody that's applicable and then get that out. Uh, to the public, and that's more nitty raw, uh, kind of in their face. But I get a, I get over like eleven hundred views uh, every time I do a video, and it costs me zero dollars. Do you, if it's on the more luxurious side of the market, do you do? I have you done more kind of promotional, professional type of videos? We have not. Uh, we've seen phenomenal uh, results in the grittiness of these videos when people actually have the ability to kind of, it's kind of like letting them in behind the scenes and letting them see, you know, what the property, and if you're animated and you got, you can really kind of go off and have a good time. If anybody wants to see this, when they watch this uh, podcast, just find me on Facebook, Greg McDaniel. I'm the guy sitting there, you know, doing this in front of two beers, you know, just find me wearing a black coat and you can go to my videos. You can watch what I've done is so you can kind of see what I mean by that. But I mean, I do see value if you're, if you're representing like a $5 million home or something like that, I, I can see the, the opportunity and the reason to go spend a lot of money on doing something. But there's so many apps up there that you can do your own post editing on that. I don't think you need it anymore, but it's definitely a, a nice touch of if, if the homeowner really wants it. Um, so on the, <clears throat> sorry, on the photography side, um, Basically, how did you how do you find good photographers? 
have you kept the one for a reasonably long period? What are and what are your general experiences of finding somebody that you can build a good working relationship? And can you also give some insights around price as well? Yeah, actually, the steel trap who's behind me right now, who's our team manager, she'd be able to give you the pricing on it. But we use a, uh, a the same guy that we've used forever and a day. Um, and, you know, he has grown exponentially. Everybody uses him. He comes in with a nice camera and knows what he does. So if you if you need it, you know, if you need to, to find someone who can do it, just ask them some of the top producers in your area. They'll be able to identify who they use for the for the photographs of their home. Or if you like a photograph of a home, go talk to that listing agent. And be like, who did this? I, w- I would love to hire them as well. You did a great job picking them out. That's that's the best way I would do it. I mean, get a, get a personal referral. Yeah. What's your so to recap? So on almost all the houses that you are selling. You get perfect. You get a professional to take the photography. Is that correct? Without a doubt, every single home we get a professional to do the photo, and then I go out there with the video and do the social media side on that stuff. What What would be your response to an agent or somebody who says that you don't need to hire somebody? I can I can do it myself. What's your response to that? Do you want my true response? Yeah, be honest about it, but don't swear though, please, because we try and keep it fact. We don't. I don't swear on your show. I swear on my show. I know you do. But... <laughs> um, no, I think that they're fools. Uh, they, I think that again, it's, it's dating. It's like not doing your hair when you go on a first date, uh, or wearing sweats or showing up like that. I mean, look, you might be a great agent, but you're not a master photographer. You know, you need some. You need someone who is a professional in their realm to do that and that's why you align yourself with a professional mortgage you know title um you know uh, photographers you know you know stagers whatever you use you don't try to do everything you can't be a jack of all trades so i would say spend the money it's worthwhile it's in a business investment and besides your sellers are going to like it they're going to love how their home looks and they're going to talk about you in a more positive light all right so can you go through the mechanic um how many photos of the house do you have a kind of set pattern with your photographer about what photography you do take and if that's the case can you give some insight how many photos you roughly do take and then can you give some idea how you fit that in with the description and text on your own site and not maybe on your social media so what we do, what I do is I do a lot of video. I don't, we don't do a lot of writing. Um, we take photos of every room. So depending on the, on the home, we, uh, we highlight every, every room, you know, anything that's an attribute on the exterior of the property, large yard, spa, pool, use, whatever, right? We, we, we make sure we highlight all of those. We want to give them enough, but not overload them. So they see the same photo multiple times. Um, and you know, that is the way we do it. And then I go out and, you know, we, we, I do a video and I, I do a video in front of it. Like we talked about I've also done videos on the interior, talking about it, kind of doing the swivel, showing people what's going on behind me. Uh, that's what we do. Uh, a lot of course, other people are writers. I'm not, um, but I lean back here who I won't put the camera on. Um, and she's all, she'll thank me for that. Uh, she, she'll, she, she, she'll do the writing for our flyers um, when it comes time. But then it, it, that was when we collaborate with the homeowner as well as reviewing the photos and walking through the home to really represent what the home really has to, to, you know, offer out into the marketplace. Do you mean the mysterious Eileen is actually in your office? She's right there. She, oh, it's, it's a bit of a gag, folks. I've been trying to get, I've been trying to get hold of this. I call her the mysterious Eileen now. I think she doesn't like English people. No, I've been, I've been, I've been cruel now. Um, so <laughs> there she is, the mysterious Eileen. Um, you have to watch. You have to watch the video, folks. Uh, um, so, so basically, your photography bill for your brokerage must be pretty sizable, then. But you, it always has paid dividends. Of course, it does. I mean, it's 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 an investment in the homes. Um, I have no idea what it costs because that's what she does. Yeah, she handles all that stuff. What's the cost of a photo? Well, how much do we how much do we pay for photos? So they're talking about how much the cost of the photos are. Yes, we've reaching got, back. We've got whispers now, folks, but he, he's trying to find out. Okay. So I was informed uh, that on average um, it's about three hundred dollars for the photos, but we also get high gloss photos, uh, high, high, high gloss um, flyers. Let me show you. This is for the video, folks. <laughs> so so you get high gloss photos like you know flyers like this. 
then with you know on the back with our brand and this is very high gloss good quality paper and they give us i think a hundred of each of them uh That's then a we great start marketing off. listing tool yeah mm -hmm. i got a whole drawer full of stuff that we take to uh marketing listings yeah uh, we'll show, hey you guys and we'll also do these photographs here's the quality here's an example right. You know, bring a home that's similar to theirs. So if they're a one-bedroom condo, don't show them a five five million dollar mansion. So you would you would strongly advise that 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 agent that's getting their first couple listings that they really should consider getting the photography done professionally. Of course, I mean because every time you're not going to probably not going to use all those flyers because once you spend and spend that money here and you go to another listing appointment, you can show what you've done before. If you don't do right. this here, then you can't take it to here. See what I'm saying? Yeah, Save some for your drop behind and packages for listings. Exactly. And if you got some left, hit the five, five, and ten right around the street. Yep. Now, have you experimented with your photography on in, on Instagram as well? I'm just getting into the, uh, Instagram, by the way, um, dipping my big toe into that pond. Uh, we have not, but that is an excellent idea, Jonathan, and I will absolutely do that. And I'll get back to you. Because I've kind of had, I've had, you know, some um, agents. Because every week I'm talking to agents, and um, I think I think we can talk about that um, when we come back from the break. So I think at the present moment, folks, we're going to go for a break and then come back and talk about Instagram. So Jonathan, exactly what are we going to talk about when we come back from the break? Pardon. So, Jonathan, we're going to, when we come back from the break, exactly what, what we're going to talk about when we come back. We're going to talk a bit more about photography and Instagram. We're going to talk about Instagram. Okay. And the tricks. Very good. Okay, folks, we're coming back off the break. We're going to talk about Instagram, and that's really social media. But we're also going to go into a bomb bomb breakthrough. And, excuse me, we're going to go professional, so, uh, the VTS, uh, VT. VHT, and then we're going to go into Bomb Bomb, which I had some experience with, and then finally uh, Playster. And we'll, I know Greg has experience with Playster. So go ahead, let's, let's drive through this in the next seven or eight minutes. That's a lot to cover. Oh, thanks. So let's just quickly wrap up about Instagram because um, what I was saying to you, Greg, is I've spoken to some agents that are really using it. And mm -hmm. because it's very dependent on tagging, You've got to be tagging all your images, and that's how people find the find your images. So it's a combination of being religious about tagging, which is very similar to Twitter and or tagging stuff in Facebook, who owns Instagram, um, but then having really good photography. And they said they're surprised the amount of views they get of properties because people are just kind of in a coffee break, skimming through Instagram, looking for properties, and they find it quite effective. So I thought I'd give you that feedback. That's fantastic. So, I completely look forward to it. I will take those and uh, I'll, I'll try it out. We have a, a couple new listings coming on, so I'll take them, play with the filters, um, and, and go for it. I think it might get some great reviews. I can't wait. You know, on a side note, everyone's talking about Instagram now, all the, all the big social media uh, podcasters there that's like the hottest thing since sliced know, bread french, yeah, yeah sliced bread french toast yep. so let's go on to the other um link so um i i read an article that ingman um the uh, marketing director i've got the gentleman's name of vht did and it was about photography and what they basically do craig is um they have local photographers nationally mm -hmm. um and obviously in more metropolitan they've got um, a group of photographers and they give you a fixed price um on certain uh, and they offer online tools so the photographer can upload you've got a secure area that you can log in they have galleries and they have other services linked in turning those into presentations and also video they've got a number of packages and services and i thought it was quite interesting but obviously you've got your relationship with your guy um but I thought it could be um, you could use utilize it um, as a secondary service or support service, or just try them out in general. What, what what's your thoughts? Um, I think this is a phenomenal service. If they don't have if people don't have a relationship with a photographer uh, that they use on a consistent basis, I would highly recommend taking a look at these guys. Their photography looks phenomenal. 
Um, also, if they wanted to up their image and maybe have these individuals do some photos for them, uh, maybe it might be a good opportunity for them to go out and showcase if they're trying to build a brand around a neighborhood or a city, go out and get some really high-end, great photos around the city or around the marketplace that they're trying to break into or are in uh, for their marketing package to hand out you know, put it up, you know, for something for buyers to, to review. So I think there's a lot of different ways you can use this, yeah. the, the system. Um, you know, I, that's, that would be my suggestion. I mean, no, I, I just thought it might be also a good backup because your photographer might be really busy, ill on vacation. So having some kind of backup, um, yeah. if you've got a crucial, might not be a bad idea. So I thought that's why I would mention it. Good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the next one, obviously we discussed it a little bit, but I thought it was relevant, Bomb Bomb. Um, have you used it at all? Yeah, I use it for marketing into my brokerage, uh, talking about, you know, what we do, you know, what, what I'm doing for training uh, courses. For anyone who watches this, I'm the head trainer for our brokerage. So I'm constantly uh, reaching out to the agents, trying to wrangle them into the, uh, into the training room for an hour or two. So... I do a recording, I blast it out to um, all of my people, but on the agent side, they have a lot of templated emails you record and then you can send it out for thanks for you know following up uh, from a meeting, gonna go have, confirming the meeting, all different types of templates that you can record, set it, send it, and you're done and it's a video email. Uh, hey, quick, quick, quick question on that. I tested that out in the last couple of weeks mm -hmm. and I found some conflict with uh, using Gmail with, with the system. I, I have not had it. Well, I, it's kind of it, for me. It's been a pain in the rump uh, to to work sometimes. Just it's, mm -hmm. it seems to be a little clunky on the back end. Yeah, it's very uh, clunky. Um, very, very, and what I do, I, I've got to have speed timing. I'm constantly on in the system, so I'm not doing like a real estate agent per se. Where right. I'm constantly using the Gmail and the media's, but it does have some conflict and has some problems, especially with uh, the Gmail. And we have the professional Google Plus too. Right. It is a little clunky in the back end, but you know what? If you want to have a, an effective email system, you know what? Sometimes you got to deal with we deal with stuff you don't really like, right? Unless but, um, there's some, something else out there that may not be clunky doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it might be in the near future. Uh, um, and um, do you use the desktop um, interface? Or do you tend to use the app on your phone when it comes to Bomb Bomb, Greg? Uh, desktop. Right. So yeah, actually, it might be actually. Um, what about your experience, Bill? Was yeah, you I'm, 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 using, the, I'm on the desktop. I haven't used the app. I I played with it for about five days, six days. I sent some. I think I sent some to you and other folks. So I didn't do a very thorough test, but it had enough conflict with my business and my my extensive email system and processes. Yeah, just a that, tip what, there, Bill. It's only got a thumbs down from me. Yeah. Just a tip, Bill. You might actually want to try it if you can on your app, using their app rather than the desktop. Um, so mixed reviews about Bomb, Bomb, but I definitely agree with you, Craig, as a way um, everybody I've spoken that's used it said they get more engagement almost straight away. Um, mm. The only concern is um, as, it, as similar programs come in, is it will it become oversaturated and then um, increasingly become less and less effective? Is it more mm. about it being slightly unusual at the present moment, and as it becomes more common, you get less effect? But that's a difficult one to answer. Well, that's so, like saying that, that, you know because telephones went from corded to uncorded, then to cell phones, did they become less effective? I think the 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 personal touch that the video has they see you hear you and everything else they get to meet you it's not you're not a stagnant photo mm -hmm. um i think that is the most powerful part about it uh, when i've sent them out i get a very good and positive response so that would be that that's what i that's what i've been experiencing in it i don't think it's going anywhere i only think it's going to go even bigger you know live video is huge in 2016 it's, it's going to get bigger and bigger there's the wild west out there with this stuff we don't know where it's going to go we don't really know what to do with the darn thing right now um it's kind of like YouTube a number of years ago. So I would keep I would keep our finger I would stay, you know, attuned to this stuff. I think there's gonna be some changes coming down the pipe in a good way. All right. So um you've got a bit fuzzy on my side, actually, Craig. There so with go. that, let's go to a break and we'll come back to finish up the podcast and we can have some little open discussion.
Okay, we're coming off the last three or four minutes of the podcast, but we're going to be open for Blab for the questions for the listeners. And uh, so let's let's sort of tighten this thing up. So we've gone through uh, a couple. Did we, we we didn't get through the last little product, which was those eight breakthroughs from Playsetter. So mm-hmm. why don't we jump into those, finish that up, how you contact us, and let's open it up for our Blab audience for discussion. Yeah, well, basically, um, Playster um, just gave some eight kind of review um, videos of properties that they really liked. Uh, I don't know if you had time, any, you and Bill had time to look at them at all. Um, the first one is hilarious. It's like, it's um, obviously, obviously she's English. Um, <laughs> But it was, uh, it was. I don't. It was like um, I don't know how to describe it. It was a bit like um, War and Peace. It seemed to go on forever. But I, I don't know if you liked it, Bill, or you thought it went on a bit. I grew up there. My dad was born about three blocks from where that was taken. That was Huntington Beach, and it was four minutes. So that you talk about it is very, very good. And I thought she caught it. And it was more about Huntington Beach, and it's had twenty five, twenty six thousand downloads. Great, it's great. What about what was your feeling about some of the others, Bill? Uh, the next, we went down to Laguna Beach. So it was like a home tour. What I really liked about the whole concept is before they got into the house, they talked about the community in the background. So if you get your search in there, people are going to watch it and learn about Huntington Beach. Now I'm experimenting right now with video for our learning management systems and online training and to send out to people to do some of the timeline interviews. And we're finding that two minutes to no more than three is a great length for a quick video. If you can tighten everything up and really make it professional. But the, the quality of the videos is extremely good. Didn't really get into it past that. I'm always looking at how they do these things, how they make the quality. So I thought it was, I thought their products all looked really good, whatever they're doing. I don't know what they're charging. So I'll let you go into the details. I don't know. Do you know anybody that's actually used the product? Well, it's not a product. It was a review. Um, they were just looking, they were looking at eight um, walkthroughs and property discussions that they thought that was done right. Um, that's what the basic article is about. Yeah, but I, to- I, I, I totally agree with what you said, though, Bill. Um, so, have you on your own websites at all, Craig? Because I, I've seen this with some very um, proactive um, brokerages and power agents, where they have a centralized video that's a little bit more polished. It's still the broker or one of the leading agents talking about an area. Mm-hmm. And the, then they have copy um, that's professionally written about that area, and they use the video for Facebook, YouTube, all the other social to drive traffic to that specific, and then they give more written information and downloads about the area. And I think that's quite effective. Is it? Is it? Is that something you've done at all or something you're thinking about doing? Yeah, we have uh, quite a few videos, you know, how to pick an agent, welcome, what, you know, why to use our team. Here's what's going on with the team. You know, it's not me being, you know, me. <laughs> it's, a, it's a much more edited, refined, smooth, glossed uh, video. And, you know, those are effective. Um, and we do now, use them. I think I, I didn't explain myself. I meant about talking about a Pacific, the eight different areas in your area, you know, and talking about the schools, the general feeling of the area, any Pacific geography or cultural things that somebody outside the area or thinking of moving into that area should know. Have you done any of those? Yeah. So what I've done is I did some videos on um, right through that wall is a thing called the Iron Horse Trail. It's where the train used to run. And it goes through, you know, two different counties, you know, 11 different cities, you know, runs for 12.5 miles. And what it does is I, I was able to talk about it. And then I turned around, I turned around and I did a shot right through that window of my old high school, talked about San Juan Valley High School, you know, school ratings, you know, why to go to it and the whole nine, uh, got a very good reviews, interviewed different uh, people in the community. Yeah, we do those. And I did those with a little bit more high gloss. Uh, but I, I'm usually more impulsive. Uh, and I'd rather just get out there and do it. I don't want to wait for anybody else. So I just go and do it. Um, and th- you know what? We're seeing positive reviews on both sides. It really doesn't matter. It, what matters is your content. If you have solid yeah. content, that's what matters. Yeah, then my, just to finish off is that um, I think the, the more slightly more polished 
where you're talking about area is, is something like what Bill says, it's evergreen content. You can stay mm -hmm. on your website and you can increase the written material that supports the video. So your SEO increases where I think with your more less polished, you know, on the spot videos about the house there is, um, has, has its place as well because it's about spontaneous spontaneous and about driving traffic and building up your own brand so i don't see the two things being um separate i, I see them as kind of working on the same purpose but kind of two different vectors did that make mm -hmm. any sense yeah it absolutely is you know a really easy way to take your uh videos and be able to get more seo out of them there's a site called rev.com r-e-v.com you can go take the video you do polished unpolished doesn't matter or audio files or whatever upload them to upload it to them and for a dollar a minute uh they will transcribe it into written text and they have like a 99.9 .9 percent you know uh, effective rate and uh with that you don't have like me being dyslexic and not wanting to sit there and type something out that's not going to happen i can take my video you do a, like we always talk about do a one to three minute video max it's going to cost you one to three dollars to get the written text then you can take that and you reconstitute it out you know in, onto linkedin you put it into facebook notes you put it onto google plus you put it in all these different places so either if you're a reader like Frank Clevitz from Viral Marketing, he's a reader, I'm not. So he would be able to in, take ingest that information in the way he likes to, or you can just watch the video, whatever you'd like. All right, so what was that? Can you put the ULR into our notes? Yeah, not a problem, let me send it right now. Uh, also, um, YouTube is coming out uh, this week with a new paid beta tool that you can buy into, it's pretty cheap, I think, to do, um, to do transcription for and if oh, you, right. said, you just put up the words even though they might mess up some words it still get you seo yeah that's interesting cool. it's on uh, this week you'll find it if you dig into youtube you know youtube does take some time to do it right to get all the different things and by the way i just looked at your iron horn iron horse trail in, uh, when you did it in 213 and it's under comedy ah hey how many how many views does it have in there not a lot it's 89 um, okay. It probably hasn't got the SEO, and no, there's, there's you, need to put, you need to throw some text in there. If you throw about three lines of text in there about the trail, you can even cut and paste them from other places and change the words around. Yeah, I I'll do it you, today. You get I, a lot I more just, SEO out of it. I just haven't done anything with that. I literally uploaded it and forgot about yeah, it. Yeah, you look young. You're very young on it. You look a lot younger. Yeah, with my hair super short. In the, yeah, in the shot. So, oh, yeah. It's okay. I mean, 89 <laughs> still 89. Those are people who found you. And then um, just make sure it's all linked. You did some work on it. It's, it's good. It's a nice picture. I like how you started it. I'm, I'm looking forward to watching it. It's a minute and uh, 22 seconds, which is good, too. Yeah, we had uh, 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 Michael Fielding, who is our tech uh, uh, you know, head here at the office. He, We were out on the trail, and he had a boom mic inches above my head. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Just inches, just sitting there. So, right, so let's let's wrap up. So, Craig, how can people get a hold of you? Yeah. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you guys can uh, give us a ring here at my brokerage uh, or at our team, 925-838-4300. Again, 925-838-4300. That's our main online office. If there's any questions you have for us or about the area here in the uh, San Francisco East Bay. Oh, that's great, Craig. We're going to continue the conversation, folks. Um after the podcast so um go to our um, websites and you'll be able to see the conversation as we go into a bit more detail on a number of these topics which we touched what well, do you reckon bill what do you well, reckon? i'll tell i'm telling like this i say folks i really suggest if you want more notes you can go over to wp tonic and look under oh, the no mail right WP bill. see you got to say this you got to go folks you want more uh information go over to mail right.com go over to the blog and you'll find this episode and if I, also, you can go over to Timelines at Timelines of Success, episode 211, and you'll find this episode. And it'll be the show notes will really be in more detail on mail dash, right? But uh, we want to thank you for coming in. We always want to thank the blob audience. We have a few folks up there, and we'll open it up for questions this time. We recommend that we suggest that if you're not listening to this on podcast, tune in at 9 Pacific, generally 9 Pacific. We might move it back a little bit someday because more people listen to blab in the afternoon than they do in the morning. And uh, come and join us and ask questions because you'll get some good uh, free marketing advice and uh, information. 
so if we're just quiet for a second, I can find, I'm, I'm getting pretty fast at editing. I do a hundred percent edit now. I mean, I listen to the whole thing generally. I go through it. I've got some really good tools for getting the sound. We had really good sound today. And one thing I will say was we had really good sound, a little baffled um, around this whole, this one together, trying to figure out because I'm doing that show daily. And it's just interesting to see uh, how many people come up on blab or don't, you know, I think it has something to do with the picture. It's on there. It's a great looking picture. I mean, it looks like great. I think you're better off using your normal. Um, you're doing your on reflection, Bill. You're doing your, and um, I don't think it'd be confusing for my, our guests. I just say, I just say it. Um, it's a, it's a joint production between you and me. But I think it would be best if you kept with your standard photo, Bill. I'm just playing with maybe, maybe not. Um, uh, but it's, it's just really interesting to study Blab. I mean, I'm really taking a deep dive into blab and speed because blab is still really important and the, the quality of podcast is good. Yeah. And the key is for me uh, now is I got another interview at 10 o'clock, but it's actually to not leave until I do the uh, initial edit, which is, you know, taking all the, uh, making it sound good and getting it done, but they do have pretty good kick on, on when they get up on the podcast. Now we're going to launch, we've got three, we're going to launch on a separate RSS feed for the real estate. And I think that'll be good too, because real estate agents will get it. And then you got to reach out. Now, what I didn't do, I was going to do this time, you know, a little bit more rehearsal. I was going to send this out to eight or nine chase agents at, right. last night. I didn't do that. I meant to do that. Right. So I think that's it. But So uh, do you, um, I, did you say you got an interview at 10 o'clock, Bill? Yeah, well, Nick, Nick's birthday. It's on the, oh, if, right. if you go to uh, timelines, it's right there, the link. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you what, the link thing worked great this week. I've got a schedule of everything that's up this week. And it even saved me time because I just hit the links anytime or send them out to folks. Yeah. Shall we just wrap up, Craig? Is there anything in the news that's caught your eye about any kind of products, news about real estate that caught your eye at all? Um, no, not really. I mean, we're just kind of ramping up, getting going. Um, nothing really kind of jumped out at me. I've been just so slammed lately. I have three or four podcasts on the uh, that are about real estate that I'm behind on. So I'm pretty sure there is something in there. I mean, I, mean, I listen to a, a bunch of other blabs about marketing. Well, and there's a lot of stuff about Twitter, but. Yeah, one thing that caught my eye in England was that, um, yeah, I think it's Zillow. They're going to do, they're, they've kind of linked up with uh, a national company that does these drone flyovers and they're going to be offering that as a service so you'll be hmm. able to take a panoramic view of the house that you're selling in the area and it does it at kind of like 12 feet level when it goes around the house and they're going to be offering that oh that's interesting that's really really interesting you know we're still on i want to make a couple comments um I, i've been in you know design built houses you know look at walls i'm actually pretty darn good at staging and taking pictures so is karen and we've actually outdone some professionals with our iPhones. And Chase, let me tell you, because Chase has done, she's done open houses for other people. And I said, these are crappy shots. And she's actually gone out with her iPhone. And last week, it was an example of that, redone the pictures. And because I, I even show her on a map, I said, here's the time of day. Here's the time of day you need to be there for the light. Because I can look at a map. I mean, I, I grew up on maps and sun. And as a design build engineer, I'm always looking at the sun and the sun angles. So um, I'm just telling you, some people do have the ability to take some pictures, but if you're really busy doing a lot of stuff, you can afford to get that agent, uh, that, that person out there. The other thing, too, is we don't have is that glossy. We make great flyers, and, and you can look online, but the glossy like you get for a marketing approach is great. The, the listing, that's where it pays off. is as much as listing as is uh, marketing the house, probably more on the listing. And um, getting it out there. Man, there's a lot of work in real estate. How many, are you seeing a lot of people coming into the business there, up, Greg? Uh, new agents wise, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're starting to come out of the woodwork. I mean, just like back in two thousand four or five, you know, when people are like, "Oh, I should get in real estate." That seems like a good idea, but as soon as it goes south, they're going to vomit us. Yeah, well, it may uh, not go south for a while. It's hard to say. Money. I was talking to Wells Fargo at the high end because of my business, and money is going to open up. It's starting to open up a little bit, which is good. Low rates. So the um. What happened, and I think John, this is what you're referring to. Sorry for cutting you off, Bill. No problem. Uh, there is uh, Keller Williams announced that they're um, at a family reunion this week that they have partnered up with Drone Base. Yeah, it was there. I, was, I apologize, folks. It wasn't Zillio. Sorry. Yeah, and they're going to offer a $200 discount. So any use uh, KW agents that did not make 
uh, the family reunion, you guys are going to a $200 discount in the, you know, drone bases pro packages are $600. Damn, that's expensive. You know, oh, basics, basics $399. I don't think you're going to be using it, but like I say, for the right property in the right circumstance, it might be effective, will not it? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not. I'm not saying. I just thought it was interesting. It was a, li- a little bit of a tick bit that caught my eye. You know, you know, uh, the government just put some requirements, and you have to license the individual drones, mm-hmm. and they're really stomping down on some requirements. For example, they got a source where they throw a drone out and it falls a skier down the hill up here. Yeah, they had to go get a waiver to do that. Because Seriously, they got a rule that you're not supposed to be in 500 foot feet of a person. Other well, that, that's on see, Craig. That's on. Um, they lease. They lease the slopes from the national forestry. Yeah. Right. So there's kind of un, so there's kind of unusual. But the thing about this drone thing in general is, it could be a, quite a considerable invasion of um, of personal, um, you know, some drone, and it catches you know some unfortunate couple or some scene that they really don't want to be on public television and also in high-end areas you know you might have some um highly visible neighbors you know celebrities would they really want um a a drone buzzing past their window so i've got mixed feelings about it you have right the airspace above you hey we we got to transfer to the other show just some thoughts for next week if we had a look quick, like Inman news you know what's uh, what's up in real estate news real fast because there is some neat news it forces you just boom boom um, if we get it really good, come out really strong. Maybe if I hit the news, boom, yeah. get engagement, and then try to get some real estate agents. I can send out like the eight to ten uh, chase agents yeah. who we know. I think I think over to later on this afternoon or tomorrow, Bill, <coughs> we need a quick zoom and talk about this because I I'm totally agreeing with you. We need to um um come to some better promotion and try some things. So maybe we can have a chat about. It. So Craig, thanks. Um, I've got, um, I'm talking to somebody at 10.30. So if I text you, is there any chance that we might either today or tomorrow have a quick Zoom for 15 minutes, Craig? Uh, let me check my calendar. Today By the way, I think the video is still a really good topic pants. to go into, like a video too. Yeah. So I think it's, it's really important to do video. And, and I think if you just go out and just get even some, it's not perfect yeah. and go do it. Oh, I think that's... Um, I, I, I slightly disagree with you on the photography side, but on the video side, I, I think the more you do on your phone mm. and mix it, I don't see any problem. I do have a little bit of reservations, but I am. But I do agree with you when when I looked at that was the thing that surprised me about Chase. Yeah, I got to go. I got to go, folks. See you later.